Good morning and welcome to our Missionary Sunday and uh, to this morning and this evening we have two different missionary organizations taking part. Uh, they're going to share concerning uh, their particular work and ministry and uh, they're also going to be sharing from God's word. And uh, this morning we have Samuel Adams with us. He's no stranger here uh, from Revival Movement Association, uh, also known as Every Home Crusade. And uh, Samuel's going to come and share in a little moment or two. But we're going to sing first, and we're going to sing our first uh, hymn this morning. It's in Songs of Victory, if you're using a hymn book, 705. We'll stand to sing, Send the Gospel of Salvation to a world of dying men, tell it out to every nation till the Lord shall come again. We'll stand to sing, please. Let's unite together as we pray and seek the face of our God this morning. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as we bow before you this morning on this uh, missionary Sunday in our own uh, little fellowship, we thank you again, uh, Lord, for the privilege uh, to serve you even in our generation. Lord, we thank you that we do have uh, a message to share with the nations. And we thank you, Lord, that the gospel is truly the power of God unto salvation. And Lord, we can uh, testify to it, uh, those of us who know you. For Lord, we know that you have uh, transformed and changed us. Uh, for we recognize that once we were afar off uh, from God, we were strangers and aliens, 
even enemies in our minds by wicked works. We were alienated from God. We had no hope in this world. And yet, Lord, uh, when we uh, believed uh, the gospel, uh, when we received Christ in faith, uh, Lord, you wrought a mighty work within us. Uh, You changed our hearts, Lord, and you've changed our lives. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, what you've done for us, you're able to do for others. Indeed, uh, Lord, there is an onus placed upon us, even upon the church of Jesus Christ, to go and tell them, even as uh, we were singing here already. And Lord, help us to do that. Uh, Lord, uh, we recognize that the days are dark and getting darker. Uh, and yet, Lord, uh, uh, the gospel is uh, the, what the world needs. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, uh, that there are still those who are uh, hearing and receiving, uh, Lord, in our own land and here in the West. But we thank you, Lord, in particular this evening for what you're doing in other parts of the world uh, where you are building your church and where, Lord, this ministry, uh, Revival Movement Association, is sending out containers where people, Lord, are hungry uh, for the word of God, where people, Lord, will walk miles, even days, uh, to receive your word, to hear your word. Indeed, Father, we thank you uh, for how you have raised up uh, this ministry, uh, Lord, to, to, to send forth uh, the printed page, so to speak, uh, Lord, here, there, and yonder. We thank you, Lord, for the many doors uh, that you have opened up, Lord, for them. We thank you, Lord, of uh, how uh, you have indeed uh, opened doors that it seems seem that seemed impregnable, and yet, Lord, uh, the word of God has is getting in. And we thank you, Lord, and we pray that uh, you will continue to bless this ministry. We have marveled in the past uh, as to how you have, uh, Lord, supplied the need. And, uh, Lord, uh, we thank you uh, that as we have done so, we are mindful uh, that God is no man's debtor, that God is able to supply all of our needs, even according to his riches and glory. And, Lord, we thank you for how you have done so uh, for this ministry. And we pray that, Lord, as we would listen to your servant today, that we might again marvel at the goodness and faithfulness of God, that we might indeed marvel at what God is doing through this ministry. As we hear, Lord, of doors being opened, as we hear, Lord, of how you have provided, as we hear, Lord, even individual stories, perhaps, indeed we pray that you will undertake for your servant, that he will know your help today as he is with us again this morning, and that, Lord, not only would he be able to impart vision, uh, to, even to encourage us, but that, Lord, you would also help him as he would turn uh, and share, Lord, uh, from the word of God with us today as well. So we commit him to you. We commit ourselves to you. We pray for your richest blessing to be bestowed upon us here. And for those, Lord, who cannot be with us for one reason or another, we pray wherever they might find themselves today, that, Lord, they too might share in the blessing of God that maketh rich in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to turn again, uh, Songs of Victory, 672, 672. Uh, we'll stand to sing again, and then I'm going to ask Samuel Adams to come and to share with us this morning. 672, standing to sing, please.
Well, first of all, this morning, uh, can I say thank you for the very warm words of welcome. It is lovely to be with you uh, again uh, this morning and uh, to be able to renew fellowship with you and uh, to be able to bring you up to date with a little bit of the work of Revival Movement Association and um, uh, Every Home Crusade. I know many of you have been praying for us, you've been supporting us, and we value that very, very much in these days. So first of all, this morning, I want to take you uh, to the factory, let you see and just uh, update you on some of our machinery, some of the machines that are operating uh, and what they're doing there in the factory. So, uh, sorry. um, So we have, first of all, the concept of printing press. This is a machine that takes one roll of paper, feeds that one roll of paper through the machine, Uh, It is printing there at a speed of about 180 meters of paper in a minute is going through the machine. Now, last year we used a total of 1,268 tons of paper. So there's a lot of paper moving through the factory um, on an ongoing basis and a lot of literature uh, being produced. Then we have uh, what we call our Heidelberg five-color press. Now, this machine here is taking sheets of paper uh, instead of rolls of paper, and uh, we can do large sheets, smaller sheets, different thicknesses, different qualities of paper, Uh, so it gives us a a lot of variety. Now, altogether, we are printing in about 95 different languages. Um, It probably is slightly more than that, uh, but we've added a few um, of recent times, but somewhere in the region of 95 languages uh, is what we are uh, printing in at this moment uh, in time. Now, once the sheets have been printed, then we go to the guillotine. Uh, and there the uh, guillotine trims the sheets to whatever size we want. Uh, these are CEF flashcard Bible lessons that, are being, that Clive here is cutting at the moment. Um, so uh, we print eight pictures, eight flashcards on one great big sheet. They are then cut down to the individual flashcards. The machine is all programmed uh, for the sizes as to where they're to cut, uh, and a uh, uh, very useful machine. From that, we go to the saddle stitchers. Now, we have two of these machines. We feed on the pages at one end of the machine. It staples the booklets. Then it comes round. It trims the edges of the booklets, and the finished booklets are coming out the other end. We will be getting something in the region of 50,000 booklets uh, a day coming off uh, these machines. Uh, Now, that's each of these machines. Um, So there's a lot of booklets being produced. Altogether, uh, last year, we produced something in the region of 7 million Gospels of John. So, of course, Word of God is very important to us, uh, and that is why we seek to get God's Word out uh, and into the hands of people in many different parts of the world. Now, you've seen the tracts being folded at the uh, printed at the beginning. Now we start to fold them. So uh, this machine here takes that big roll of paper and unwinds the roll of paper. So as it unwinds that roll of paper, it is then cut into little individual sheets. Those little individual sheets then go into a folding unit. There's a series of blades, cut them into the individual tracts. The tracts are then counted, put into bundles, and the bundles are coming out uh, the other end and ready to go into the boxes. Uh, We'll be getting nearly 100,000 tracts an hour uh, coming off this machine. So uh, it just gives you uh, an idea on speed. Now we have a whole team of volunteers uh, work uh, in the factory as well. Most of them work on uh, on, uh, flashcard Bible lessons. So uh, what they do is, first of all, the sheets are all collated uh, into books. Then uh, the machine takes the, uh, the book, punches a hole in it, puts the wire spiral bind in, finished book is coming out the other end, and then these are then boxed with teacher guides uh, ready to go to some part of the world. So we are just a steady flow of flashcard Bible lessons going through the factory um, and being shipped Um, right throughout the year. Now, uh, this is our paper store. So um, uh, paper, of course, very important to us. We are using around five to six tons of paper every working day. 
So that means five, six ton of paper is moving into the print room in the day. And at the same time, all the literature that's being produced is coming back out of uh, the print room and into the store. So there's just a constant steady flow. Last week, uh, we shipped a 20, or a 40 foot container uh, to Nigeria. So that came out of the store. At the same time, there was about 50 tons of paper delivered last Tuesday. So that was going into the store. Uh, this week, we hope to be able to ship a container uh, to uh, South Sudan. Uh, and then we also have a lot of pallets of literature uh, getting ready. Uh, some of them are going to Botswana, to Swati, uh, and uh, to Zimbabwe. So there's just a constant flow of material coming and going uh, from the store. Talking about containers, well, sometimes we're shipping little five kilo parcels. Other times we're shipping the pallets and other times uh, the containers. So this here is actually a 40 foot container, uh, but uh, quite often it'll be 20 foot containers that we're shipping uh, to some part of the world. Altogether, we're shipping literature to about 170 countries uh, around the world. So there's just a a constant uh, flow of material. Now, this is the big printing press that we have. Uh, This machine here uh, takes three rolls of paper, feeds those three lines of paper through the machine, prints all six sides. Uh, The sheets then come together, uh, they're folded, and then they're cut into individual sections. Those then are counted and put into bundles, and that is what then goes to the saddle stitchers uh, to be made uh, into the booklets. A tremendous machine to get a lot of uh, material uh, printed. One of those rolls of paper uh, is over eight miles long. Uh, So it gives you an idea and you have three of those on the machine all printing at the same time. So it does give you an idea uh, just uh, the amount of paper um, and the volume of paper uh, that is going through. I want to talk about some of the ministries and some of the people that we're working with in different parts of the world. We work very closely with Mailbox Club. Now, Mailbox Club have... uh, young people's booklets, and they also have teacher guides to go along with those. So uh, we have been shipping these uh, to many different parts um, of Africa. Uh, We've been concentrating on Africa with Mailbox Club. Uh, We've been printing in English. Those will be going to most of the English-speaking countries. Uh, Then we have uh, French that we've been printing in. Uh, Just at the moment, if you were in the factory, you would find us printing about 150,000 of the booklets in the Amharic language. Uh, So these are going into uh, all these different um, uh, African countries, being used in schools, being used in churches, uh, in lots of different settings, uh, and being very, very effective uh, in what they're doing. We do this, uh, we work with the Mailbox Club in South Sudan. Uh, The government there have actually asked uh, for these booklets to go into all the schools. Um, right across uh, South Sudan. So uh, we have been shipping container loads. Each container will have about 200,000 booklets plus teacher guides. And then those will, once they arrive in Juba, then they head from Juba out into the country, uh, into the different uh, states within South Sudan. We continue to work very closely with Bible Educational Services. Again, more young people's Bible study booklets. Uh, the idea is that these will be used in either schools or Sunday schools. There is a weekly, um, uh, a weekly Bible study uh, for young people. These are children here in Ethiopia uh, that have got the booklets and uh, are using them there uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, but a lot of them have been used in uh, the schools, especially in Tanzania. We have been shipping a lot of these to Tanzania in the Swahili language. Um, and uh, there is just a huge number of churches Uh, schools there in Tanzania who have requested uh, for these booklets. Uh, The one tremendous thing that we find with these booklets is the number of teachers that come back and say that they notice a difference in their young people, in their classroom, as young people start to study the Word of God. Because as they study the Word of God, they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, their behavior changes, disciplinary problems then melt away, Uh, And uh, this is a tremendous, uh, the teachers, the headmasters in these schools see this as something that is uh, uh, tremendous. 
The other thing is as well, parents also report difference in their young people. Uh, and that is so encouraging just to hear the, what the gospel does in the lives of young people. Going to the other side of the world, uh, to Colombia. Now, uh, there is a guy there uh, called Richard Sanderson. Richard uh, and his wife operate an orphanage uh, there in the country. And they bring many, many young people in, uh, look after them, feed them, clothe them, school them, uh, and all the rest of it. But at the same time, Richard is really in, um, interested in evangelism and literature distribution. So we ship him a container load of literature. Um, all the young people uh, from the home there, uh, they come, they all help to unload the container. Uh, here we have Richard himself and uh, with uh, those young people. So they all unload the container and then they sort the literature all out. Now, I don't think I have met anybody that can organize and distribute a container load of literature as quickly as Richard does. When we ship the literature to Richard, we send him a list of exactly what is in the container. And then uh, during those weeks as it is traveling, he informs the churches of the arrival of the literature. Now, what happens is he is in touch with about 600 churches there in Colombia. And they all get supplies from the container. So what he does is the day the container arrives, then he sends out messages giving everybody an appointment time when they are to come in the next three days and what they are going to get. So they need a vehicle or whatever uh, to take away their boxes. So in the next three days, uh, all these different pastors from different churches all turn up for their supply of literature. All the young people help them. And they all work together. At the end of three days, he will have the entire container load of literature distributed to those 600 churches. And the only literature that he will keep back is literature that he himself wants to use and wants to distribute. So it is a tremendous way of getting many, many churches a nice little supply of literature uh, and helps and encourages many of these folk uh, with the literature and lets them know uh, and uh, they, they can use it. He has got another container on request now uh, for 2024. Then we have the country of Myanmar. Now, Myanmar is a country uh, formerly known as Burma, uh, so, but a country that is in the middle of a civil war uh, and uh, terrible bloodshed going on in that country uh, at this time. But the interesting thing is that there are, we cannot ship the literature directly into the country, uh, but uh, we use uh, another, another method of getting the literature in. But um, there are Bible colleges there in Myanmar. Uh, those Bible colleges actually teach in the English language, um, but they have great difficulty in getting English books. Uh, and what we have been doing, we have been printing uh, what we call the revival publishing books. They are some of the older classic books, uh, books like Bishop from writers like Bishop J.C. Ryle, D.L. Moody, Andrew Murray, and so on. Many of these books. And uh, we, we send them a whole selection of the books. Uh, and you can see here, these guys are just literally working their way down through the line of books and getting almost a little mini library um, of English books that will help to give them a bit of good, solid teaching material. Uh, we actually have, right at this moment in time, uh, um, a whole consignment en route uh, for Mymar. Uh, we have other uh, books in tribal languages that will be going into that part of the world as well. Um, so hopefully around the middle of December into January, uh, there will be a lot of literature arriving there in Myanmar. So uh, pray for that literature as it gets into that country and ha that the Lord will take it and use it. We continue to work with Every Home for Christ in Bulgaria and in Moldova. Uh, they have a lot of door-to-door -door ministry in those two countries. Uh, what they do is they organize teams and they pick areas of the country and there they will go and literally visit every home in a village, every home in a town, uh, and move through the countryside like this, covering different towns, different villages, and so on. 
And they are going into areas of the country that are basically unevangelized, where there are new evangelical churches. Some of these areas in Bulgaria are actually Muslim areas. But there they go and they visit literally door to door. Last This past year, we have supplied them with about half a million leaflets into Bulgaria, 400,000 leaflets into Moldova. And as they go out, these people are receiving the gospel message. Now, they also offer Bibles. They also offer um, other Christian literature uh, so that people can write in. And often as they go around door, or doors, people are more than keen to talk, more than keen to hear um, the way of salvation and uh, are filling in the forms, sometimes even directly on the doors, asking for a Bible uh, to be sent to them with more uh, gospel literature. So we are really pleased uh, with the work that is going on there in Bulgaria uh, and in Moldova. And this is just showing you some of the people, some of the needy people, uh, receiving the Word of God, uh, possibly even for the very first time. We also uh, have our depot in Brazil. Now, uh, I was out there a couple of weeks ago. I actually went to a a conference um, in Brazil uh, but I also was able to spend a little bit of time in our depot there. Uh, uh, unfortunately, when I was there, the depot was almost empty as far as literature was concerned. Um, uh, the last container load had gone out very, very quickly. So what we do is we ship a whole container load of literature to the depot. Uh, they, in turn, then handle all the requests from right across Brazil. Uh, from many different ministries, churches, and so on, and the literature then is filtered out. Uh, I'm glad to say that uh, on uh, Thursday, uh, they got uh, another container, arrived with them safely, Uh, so now they will be very busy. They have a backlog of requests, so at this moment in time, uh, they will be busy uh, getting that literature out. Now, um, uh, they have a whole team of uh, folk come to help them unload a container. These uh, young guys that come to help them unload the container uh, come from a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. Uh, it's Christian run. Um, and uh, these young guys will all come and help them uh, to unload the container, to sort out the boxes and so on. Uh, because literally there is only Daniel and Suli um, in the depot. So that would be far too big a job. Daniel there is in the orange uh, shirt, uh, and uh, uh, not only is Daniel um, working uh, full-time with us in the depot, but on a part-time basis, he's also looking after a little church. We went to see his little church. It's in a town uh, just uh, not very far out of the main city, um, a, little, a little church that uh, was started many, many years ago. Uh, he actually told us... Um, Uh, a little about the building of the church. He said many years ago, uh, a group of Christians in this town uh, decided to build themselves a little church, a little Baptist church, um, and the members all made bricks at home. And he actually had stripped a wall, and all the bricks are all slightly different sizes and slightly different colors, um, but um, the, the, the Christians all made the bricks at home, then brought them, and they built them. He said, during the building of the church, the walls were knocked down several times by, from opposition within the town. And he said, even today in the town, there is the Roman Catholic priest in that town opposes that little church in a fierce way. He says, um, anybody that comes to the church, they need to understand, they need to know what they believe because the priest will go to them and will quiz them up and down as to what they believe and uh, why they go to the church uh, and so on. Whenever Daniel took over that little church, there was only about, um, there was only about uh, half a dozen people going to it. Now he said he has about 40, uh, mostly young people, attending uh, that little Baptist church uh, there in that town and carrying on uh, an evangelical witness um, in that place. So Daniel does a great work. The guy beside him there in the green is Brother Peniel. Now, uh, Brother Peniel um, uh, has a work right across uh, a number of the Latin American countries. What he does is he sets up and encourages evangelists. Then he supplies them with literature. 
And he has a whole network of evangelists uh, in places like Bolivia, Peru, right across Brazil, um, uh, and so on. And there he uh, keeps in touch with all these different folk and helps them uh, with supplies of literature. So we're very keen to work uh, with Brother Peniel as well. Um, Aramis is our graphic designer. Uh, we work very closely with him. But he does a little bit of deputation work. And uh, when I say deputation, it's more like promotional work because he goes to churches uh, and uh, in different areas, more like mission days as well, and lets them know uh, that literature is available. Uh, in the depot, that they can come, that they can order their literature uh, from the depot. Uh, and that is a very important work uh, as far as we're concerned as well. Now, uh, we continue to work very closely with Child Evangelism Fellowship. I've already mentioned the printing of the flashcard Bible lessons. Um, they had a conference in Botswana uh, earlier this year. And there they brought all their leaders from right across Africa. Every leader from across Africa uh, was present. Now, um, uh, we then, um, there's, uh, I work very closely with Bogdan uh, Basara, uh, literature coordinator from around the world. But um, uh, what we did was we had meetings with different areas. There were so many people there. So what we did, we split them into groups. So we had a meeting for West Africa, a meeting for East Africa, a meeting for South Africa, uh, or Southern Africa, and a meeting for the French-speaking countries. These are all the leaders here from the French-speaking countries. Uh, and it really, different people had lots of different questions. Uh, and we nearly ended up talking to every single country uh, in these meetings, answering specific questions. Some were asking, when are we getting our literature? Others were saying, well, my literature is in customs. Is there anything particular I need to do to try to get that literature out? Uh, and asking all sorts of questions about customs. Uh, others were asking about distribution uh, uh, and all sorts of little queries. Uh, I can remember one particular lady, and uh, she spoke up, and she says, um, uh, whenever I got my literature, I didn't get any Meet the King booklets. And uh, she was a little bit annoyed that she had no booklets of these Meet the King booklets. Uh, so I said, well, I'm very sorry, but we just could not manage to print everything in time for the shipments. Uh, but I said, there are no countries got Meet the King booklets at all. And uh, at that, she went, oh, well, if nobody got them, then I'm fine. Um, so just as interesting, the different reactions uh, from people. Uh, but uh, it was a really good time to meet so many folk. On the Monday morning, they took us to a school. Uh, a school assembly. Now, let me tell you something. That there is at 20 past 7 in the morning. All right? So that is the time the children start school in Botswana. Um, and uh, the other thing was, I know we think of Africa as being warm. But I can tell you it was not warm. It was cold. It was about 5 degrees that morning. And if you look very carefully, you'll see the children are actually wearing all sorts of little uh, woolly caps uh, and so on. So it was anything but warm. Uh, this was their assembly, the new nice assembly hall. This was assembly. Uh, one of the local CF workers uh, did a short Bible lesson uh, with the children. Uh, after that, we just started to distribute Every Day with God booklets. Uh, these are little devotional booklets, and uh, all the children there got an Every Day with God uh, booklet. This is Bogdan Basara that I was referring to a moment or two ago, and uh, uh, he was delighted. Uh, then uh, we literally went round the corner, and we found the other half of the school. This was the little bit more senior half of the school. Again, another assembly. Uh, again, we, uh, one of the local CF workers uh, did a lesson using uh, the wordless book. I'm not sure. You can just about see the wordless book there. Uh, but they did a lesson uh, using the wordless book. And uh, after that, then we had uh, 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 Wonder Devotional Booklets, um, just for a slightly older age group. Uh, and we gave these out uh, to all the pupils there in the school. And this will give them 60 days of um, material, uh, Bible reading every day, uh, some few questions to answer and so on. So these booklets are uh, invaluable. Uh, so all these uh, boys and girls got their every, uh, every day with our Wonder Devotional booklets. You know, most of the school, uh, most of the classes had classrooms, 
But this particular class, they didn't have any classroom at all. And you can actually see they were just literally meeting underneath a tree. Uh, and you can see the chalkboard. Uh, teacher was there. And this is where they were sitting. Um, so uh, it just gives you a little different uh, picture. But it was a very, very good time in Botswana. Now, I want to take you to a different part of the world. And uh, we're going um, uh, to... Uh, let me see. Uh, we're going just to give you an idea where we are in the world. So this is little corner is Australia. You have Papua New Guinea that you will possibly have heard of. But there are many of these islands here. Uh, and really, we rarely hear about them. We rarely know anything about them. And yet we are shipping literature to these countries. We're shipping it uh, primarily to CF, but sometimes every home for Christ as well. So you have the likes of the Solomon Islands, you have Vanuatu, you have Fiji, you have Tuval, Tongo, Samoa, uh, and all these. Now, on the map there, it looks like a few dots. So you might get the idea that it's just two or three islands uh, in each of those countries. Some of those countries have up to 200 inhabited islands. Uh, so it gives you an idea that, you know, there are a lot of people in this part of the world as well. Um, uh, this guy and his wife... Uh, they are involved in um, uh, Vanuatu, um, and they have uh, something in the region of 187 good news clubs uh, in, that, um, in, in that cluster of islands. Uh, this lady here, she's in charge of the work in Samoa. Uh, again, another group of islands uh, and the work going on there. Now, all of these leaders were in the Philippines, uh, again, for another CF conference there. And some of the other countries that were represented were from this part of the world as well. So we had Myanmar, we had Thailand, uh, we have all these different countries in that region as well. And uh, uh, interesting enough, uh, we were just sitting beside uh, this couple um, in the meetings, and uh, they are from Myanmar. And uh, they were talking to me and they were saying, oh, you know, we just can't get any flashcard Bible lessons uh, they said, it's just so expensive to print in the country. We just don't have flashcard Bible lessons. And uh, I should try and explain there are meetings going on. And then there's a, always a coffee break, a lunch break, and all these types of breaks. Uh, and these are the times that you talk amongst the different people. So uh, they had told me and talked to me about the need for their flashcard Bible lessons. I began to think, we are going to ship material um, and uh, we are to another organization in Myanmar. I talked to you about the Bible colleges. I wonder, could we ship flashcard Bible lessons as well? So I wrote um, an email uh, during one of the meetings. I, I, I sent this email off, and uh, I got a reply really quick, and I had asked, could you manage to take flashcard Bible lessons into the country as well as all the other literature? And the reply came back, yes, we will be happy to do that. And uh, so I told this couple here, I says, I've got a route uh, to get you flashcard Bible lessons. They were so excited. Then I said to them, I says, I've got your order form. And it says 100 copies of every flashcard. Uh, I said, is that really what you can use? He says, oh, no, we could use a lot more. Well, I says, there's your form back again. You fill that in and bring it back to me. And sure enough, a while later, they turned up with their form. Next time round, their form said around 800 or 1,000 of every flashcard Bible lesson. Why do they need so many? Because they have over 800 good news clubs there in Myanmar, teaching the Word of God to the boys and girls in the middle of a civil war. So you begin to get the, the idea. God is at work. And these people, these people are just so excited that they will receive flashcard Bible lessons uh, sometime um, in uh, January. Um, we also visited uh, the Philippine Bible Society. Now, these are the people that import our containers into the Philippines. There is a little lady there, uh, Sister Perry. This is her here. And Sister Perry, she has been suffering from breast cancer, but she hasn't stopped working. Uh, she's carried on. That little lady is really on fire. And uh, so excited. She says to me, I hope you have more tracks coming to us. She says, I have over 450 different organizations and groups within the Philippines coming to me looking for 
tracts, Gospels of John, and material to evangelize with. So I told her, well, we're about to ship a container at that time. Uh, I said, we're about to ship a container with over a million tracts and 100,000 Gospels of John. She was absolutely thrilled. Uh, So that container is arriving just about now in the Philippines. They're working at getting it all ready to clear through customs, uh, and that will give them uh, a lot of material with which to carry on the work. Uh, We also were at a conference in Ethiopia. Um, um, Again, this was Every Home for Christ. They brought all their leaders from across um, Africa, and uh, we had a very good time with them. I took with me a young guy called Johnny Rogers. Uh, Johnny um, has been working in the factory as a summertime job, uh, and then as he went on through uh, university and so on, uh, he came each summer and he worked with us every summer. Now he's um, come full-time with us. He's become my assistant in the office, and I'm very, very pleased to have him working with me on a full-time basis. Um, But we also this past year started three other young men uh, learning uh, printing. We have three large printing presses. Uh, Each of them are completely different. Um, So we're training three young guys on those uh, printing presses right at this moment in time. So we're very thankful to have um, all of this new staff. But uh, back to the conference. We met a couple of folk um, at the conference. This is Daniel and his wife. They're from Angola. Uh, a Portuguese-speaking country. Uh, and then there was also Brother Godfrey, again, another Portuguese-speaking country from Mo- uh, Mozambique. And both of these guys, as they talked to us, there was one thing they said. They said, we are desperate need for scriptures. We need New Testaments, at least New Testaments, for our work. So uh, right at this moment in time, we are in the middle of printing 30,000 New Testaments. Those will be going to Mozambique. Um, somebody said to me in a meeting recently, they said, well, how did you decide to ship to Mozambique first? Uh, I said, well, because Mozambique actually ordered them first. Uh, And uh, they've ordered them over uh, about a year ago. They had asked me about these. So uh, we're in the middle of getting those ready right at this moment in time. And then we will get them en route uh, to Mozambique um, and uh, help Daniel in Angola with supplies uh, of New Testaments later they told us many churches, not even many churches, with the only Gospels of John uh, that we have supplied. We continue to work uh, uh, into Russia, Ukraine, um, and those Eastern European countries that are uh, working into that part of the world. We continue to work very closely with Bible Mission, with their project. Uh, they have told us that the uh, Gospel calendars that we have printed this year for their project already have arrived in Russia. The other material for Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, um, uh, Moldova, that is all going in right at this moment in time. So pray for that uh, material as it arrives. We've also shipped, uh, just in this last week or two, uh, a lot of material, uh, a lot of Gospels of John and so on. Uh, those um, uh, uh, we've been helping CMI aid. We shipped about 220,000 Romanian, Russian, and Ukrainian Gospels of John uh, to them. Uh, there was also uh, 130,000 uh, Romanian calendars went to Paul Williams. That has all just moved out in the last week, two weeks. Uh, so a lot of uh, material has been going out into that part of the world. So pray for that as it goes out. This morning I'm just sharing a little bit but um, of some of the countries, some of the places that we're operating in. And just continue to pray that we will be able to help many, many more of these folk with supplies of gospel literature. Now, I want us to turn to God's Word, and I want to read a few verses here from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and uh, I'm going to start reading uh, at verse 1. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh, and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light 
of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. A couple of words I want to pick up there on in verse 4. In verse 4, it talks about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. The glorious gospel of Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul also referred to the glorious gospel of Christ uh, in the book of Timothy. Uh, and there he talks about the glorious gospel being, being entrusted to us. Uh, and, and it is so true that for every one of us who know and love the Lord as our Savior... Yes, the gospel has been entrusted to us to pass it on, to share it uh, to others. But you know, as this morning, as we think of the glorious gospel, we want to think of what that glorious gospel is. To think that the Lord Jesus Christ was sent, that God, you know, gave his only begotten Son to shed his blood at Calvary. And friends, this morning, as we think of the shed blood at Calvary, and there it is. Um, so that we could have our sins forgiven. And yet today we thank God that we are serving a living, risen Savior, one who is alive, one who is seated upon the Father's right hand, one who is making intercession for us. And friends, this morning, as we think of the gospel and what it can do and what it has done within our own lives, the gospel transforms, it changes lives, it makes lives anew, gives new direction, gives hope, gives eternal life, gives what it is people, for people to know what it is to have their sins forgiven, to know peace with God. But friends, this morning as we think of the glorious gospel, we also read verse 3. And verse 3 read, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. Friends, this morning there are only two groups of people in our world. It doesn't matter where you look in our world, there are only two groups of people. There are those who are saved, And there are those who are lost. Those to whom the light has shined and to those whom the light has not shined. Doesn't matter what language people speak in our world, there are only two groups, the saved and the lost. Doesn't matter what color people's skin is, two groups. Doesn't matter where you look in our world, there are only two groups of people. Sometimes I get people writing to us in our work and uh, they, they write in, they've got a gospel tract and they write and they try so, to, to develop some sort of argument, some sort of awkward questions, um, all sorts of debating points uh, that people write. And uh, normally I answer them with this particular whole thought line. And I simply go back to them and I say, look, there are only, the Bible teaches us that there are only two groups of people. There are those who are saved and there are those who are lost. And you fall into one of those two groups. Which of those two groups do you think you fall into? And whenever you throw people that question, mind you, it helps to sort an awful lot of arguments um, out. But friends, you know, as we look around our world today, you know, spiritually looking around our world, there are literally millions of people living in spiritual darkness. No light whatsoever. No hope whatsoever. No nothing of what it is to have their sins forgiven. And yet then in verse 6 we find the words, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And what happens? God wants the light to shine. Why does he want that light to shine? Because there is good news to be shared. Good news that people can know salvation. Good news that people can know what it is to have their sins forgiven. Good news that you can have peace with God. But friends, this morning we need to remember that good news is only good news when good news arrives in time. Let me try and illustrate that. Whenever I was um, on a trip years ago to Kazakhstan, I was out with a team. Again, we went into an area of Kazakhstan, unevangelized, and uh, literally following maps and going village by village and distributing literature. And there was a name and a village on a map. And we decided to visit that village. And uh, 
Well, we went up one hill down the other, and it was a sort of a tracky road, a crossbreed between a lane and a, a road. But we followed this to this particular village. And when we got to the village, we were quite amazed. Yes, there was a whole lot of houses, but the houses were starting to fall down. Why? Because there wasn't one single person left living in the village. And we literally had to turn our vehicle right around and head back exactly the route that we had come. And I can remember somebody making the comment, the gospel arrived too late in that village. Too late for the people of that village. And friends, today, there are literally millions of people in our world. And for some of them, the gospel is arriving too late. A multitude of people going to eternity. And friends, this morning, we have got the good news of the gospel. We have got the light of the knowledge of God. And we have got to share that today. What does light do? Light brings knowledge. Light brings and shows people their need for repentance. Yes, it shows people that they need to be putting their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that knowledge, yes, it brings new life in Christ. And today, in all the publications that we are printing, that is the message that we are seeking to get out. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God. To get the glorious gospel, the news of the glorious gospel spread. Whether it's to young people, whether it's to older people. That is what all our publications are seeking to do to spread the glorious light of the gospel message. That is why we see the importance of getting the word of God out and into hands of people. Because it is the word of God that works and it is the word of God that the Holy Spirit takes up and uses in an extraordinary and a special way. You know, one of the things that excites me in our ministry is the fact of being in touch with so many people in our world who are willing to reach out to their own people with the word of God. So many people who are sacrificing, so many people who are doing all that they can to reach out with the Word of God. I told you about Daniel there. You know, Daniel was saying to me, he said, you know, he said, that little church that I've taken over, there's no finance. I have to finance it all myself. But he says, the wages that you give us from the depot allow me to keep that wee church going. You know, and here's people willing to sacrifice their own finance in order to evangelize their own people. And friends, this morning as we think of that, you know, it is so encouraging to realize that as the Word of God goes out, it is touching hearts and lives in different places. We hear different reports. I already mentioned the likes of schools and young people. Uh, and, and, and we get this message from many different places. Again, we hear of village communities in different parts of the world. As the Word of God gets into the hearts and the lives of people, yes, lives are being transformed, and communities then are being transformed because of the power of the gospel. Friends, sometimes here at home we have forgotten the power of the gospel. We have forgotten the power of the Word of God. But friends, this morning, it is alive, it is real, and it is changing and moving uh, lives in many parts of our world today. And that is what we are continuing to seek to do through the printed page. Get God's Word out. Get it into the hands of people. Yes, in many of these countries there are huge populations. We have many, many requests for gospel literature from, very, from a whole range of different parts of the world. And just ask you to continue to pray for us in these days. That the Lord will continue to go before us. The Lord will help us as we get the literature out uh, and into the hands of people. We have had some remarkable opportunities in the last year to get literature into countries uh, in quantity that we have never been able to get into uh, before. And just pray that that literature will uh, arrive and make an impact uh, into these countries. I can't share those this morning um, uh, simply uh, for the security of the folk uh, in these different countries. But I want us to turn to our closing hymn now. And uh, hymn number, um, I think it's 709. There's a call comes ringing or the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light.
Heavenly Father, this morning we want to thank you that we have that great privilege of sending the gospel light. Father, we thank you, Father, for our many supporters, the many people who pray for us, the many people who support us financially. Thank you, Father, for every one of them. And Father, this morning we want to thank you, Father, for each head bowed here. Father, we pray now that you will bless each home represented. Part us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.